He's our rescuer, amen? He's our God. He's our provider. He's our deliverer. He's our healer. He's all those things to us. We're here to praise him. We're here to honor him. And we just thank God for him. Amen? Amen. So thank God for all of you. You may be seated. Go ahead and greet someone. Let's go to the Lord today as we should every day. Ethan, can you give me just a little more here? All right. So, you know, you heard me already start. Those of you that uh, you missed it, I was up here, you know, jamming and sharing. No, just kidding. God is doing some amazing things here at Crossroads and with Parkview together. Um, and I'm just grateful for everything that he's doing. So our message today, while it's not the title of our message, the message is really about shouting and not doubting. The message is about shouting, not doubting. Now, I know for some of you, you know, we're, we're more reserved. And I'm not talking about Parkview, folks. I'm talking about Crossroads. Some of you are real reserved. But when I'm talking about shouting and not doubting, I'm referring to the walls of Jericho. I'm referring to God's promises. I'm referring to what we should do in spite of our circumstances. Now I'm going off, off script here because I just started thinking about this. We're not in football season right now, but many people are so reserved in church, the minute they walk out of church, they're ready to shout for a team. They're ready to shout for a football player, for their quarterback, for a running back, for a wide receiver, for a touchdown. They're ready to shout. But none of those people have ever done anything for you like our God has done for us. So we need to be ready to shout and not doubt what God is doing for us. Amen? So in Joshua 6, let me get into the word before I get lost here. In Joshua 6, we're reading all about God's plan. We're reading about God's guidance to the people in order for them to become victorious over Jericho. But as far as they're concerned, in their minds, they're not going to be able to conquer Jericho. They see Jericho as this great big city. This city represents to them something insurmountable, something unconquerable. Victory is unachievable. It's improbable. All these are bulls. They just see it that way. But God is telling them the victory is theirs. And the reason I mentioned this right from the beginning, right from the jump, we're right in it now, we're in the thick of it, right from the get-go, is that some of you are dealing with your own Jerichos right now. You're dealing with your own Jerichos where you're seeing your situation as something insurmountable, as, some, as victory being unattainable, unconquerable, improbable, all these different things. And God is saying the victory is yours already. The victory is yours already. It doesn't matter because what happens is that the enemy comes in. I said this at the beginning when we started the worship. The enemy comes in and he's at work and he tries to create strongholds in our minds. He tries to create strongholds in our lives and they seem to impede us from moving forward. They grip us and hold us back. And they blind us to seeing the things that God wants us to see. And it may be due to an illness you're struggling with. It may be due to some trauma in your life. It may be due to some brokenness that occurred. It may be due to finances. You know, it may be even some type of bondage that you were involved in or were involved in that has caused you to relinquish your hope, to relinquish your faith, to abandon it and say, I just can't hang on to this anymore because this is hanging on to me. So my goal today, my goal today is to help reinstill that hope that we have in God. Amen. So that you don't relinquish your faith, but like we say here at Crossroads, that you replenish your faith in God this morning. Amen? And to be able to replenish so that you know that the walls of Jericho are going to come down. The walls of Jericho are going to come down. These walls have surrounded you for far too long. Or these walls have kept you from entering into the place that God has promised you for far too long. And it's time to shout and no longer doubt. Amen? Amen. All right. So one of the things we see is that this is a major city, right? Um, I said I wouldn't get into all the archaeology of this, but uh, it said that there were actually two walls that were actually around Jericho, that it was that fortified, that there were two. And this was something the people were going to have to overcome. And the thing about it is that God wasn't going to let them go around it. God was not going to let them go around it. He wasn't going to let them say, 
It's not there. You know, you know how we say, I'm not here or I'm not here, it's not there, whatever. He wasn't going to let them go around it. He wasn't going to let them avoid it. He wasn't going to let them deny the fact that this obstacle, that this thing was in front of them. In our journeys, our journeys, we need to learn to stop avoiding the obstacles that are in front of us. We need to learn to stop thinking that God's going to let us turn around, turn back, or go do something else. No, God's going to put us through them because he's all about us conquering, not avoiding and denying the things that are before us. So we need to go forward in them. And we've seen that in the Word. I'm not telling you anything you haven't read already. We saw it when the Red Sea, when they came to the Red Sea. Did he have them go around it? Did he have them turn back? Did he have them figure out some other way? No, they went through it. They went through it, but in him, through the power that he had. It was the same with the Jordan River, and now here they are again with another obstacle, the Jericho Walls. The Jericho Walls. Now, this city, yes, very imposing. And one thing that we have to remember is the people of Israel, they weren't warriors, were they? I mean, these people have been in slavery for 400 years and then wandering in the wilderness for 40 more years after that. So they weren't a great military team, you know? They weren't mar- Army, Navy, Marine Corps. Did I miss one? No. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Uh, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. There we go. Yeah, you know, I did it on purpose, Michael. Um, they weren't any of those things. These were just people. But here you have God telling them, hey, guess what? I don't care that you don't have military experience because it's not about you. It's not about you. I don't care that you don't have this type of background or that you're this or that you're not that. I want you to just believe in me, to believe in what I'm telling you so that you can overcome it, so that you can trust in me and realize that in partnership together with God, not on our own, in partnership with God, we will overcome. We all have Jerichos in our lives. We all have those strongholds, those obstacles that seem insurmountable. Those obstacles that seem like, you know, you're in a hopeless situation. You're not going to be able to move past this. You're not going to be able to get beyond this. But regardless of it, God is saying to you, the victory is yours. The victory is yours if we would just see it. You know, one of the things that we need to be reminded of like I said, is God doesn't want us walking around these obstacles, but he also doesn't want you walking around carrying them. He doesn't want you walking around carrying unconquered territory in your life. You know, it's like a backpack. If I had a backpack on and I'm walking around with this stronghold, I'm walking around with these walls, I'm walking around with these obstacles, and I'm dragging them along and I have them in my back so that I can't see them. So in other words, I'm denying that I'm even carrying them. But God says to us in Psalm 55, 22, lay down your burdens. Lay it at his feet. We're not supposed to carry these things around. We're supposed to lay them at the, Lord, lay them at the feet of the Lord. But many of us, because of denial, we're like, there's nothing wrong with me. You can't see what I'm carrying behind me. You don't know what's up in my head. You don't know what I'm feeling in my body. You don't know what my heart is going through. You don't know the depression I'm struggling with. You don't know the addictions. You don't know my brokenness. You don't know, you don't know, but you do, and so does God. And God is saying it's time to confront them. It's time to confront them because it's time for the walls to come down. Amen? It's time for these walls to come down. And that's what the story of Jericho illustrates to us that we need to be able to conquer these things because they don't define us, they shouldn't be discouraging us, and they definitely can't defeat us through the power that we have in him, through the strength that we have in him if we would just face him. So how do we overcome something that's seemingly insurmountable or this hopeless situation? Well, the first thing we need to do is see. S-E-E, not see, senor, Noah. See. See, we need to be able to view things and see through God's perspective. I I said to you all during the Christmas uh, holiday last year that the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I said joy is God's perspective. Because when we say the joy of the Lord is my strength, if you take the word joy out and put God's perspective, what you're saying is God's perspective is my strength. So what he's telling us to do is see via his perspective, to see the situation how he sees it, to see it through eyes of faith and through the presence of his spirit in our lives. Amen? Amen. 
so that we don't see things through natural eyes, we see things through spiritual eyes. So if you look at Joshua 6, starting with verse 2, if they put it up there, what you'll see is the very first word. It's come. There you go. Uh, verse 2, please. And the Lord said to Joshua, See. Notice, that's one sentence. See. Exclamation point. So he's not saying, Hey, Sherry. See? No. It's a command. Gabriel, see. 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 And then what is he telling them to see? See that I have given Jericho over to you. See that I have placed it in your hands. See that it is yours. See the victory. See these things. Now, had it happened? No, it hadn't happened yet. But God was looking through his eyes, his perspective, and he wanted them to see that the obstacle was already defeated. We need to see that the obstacle is already defeated in our lives. We need to see the things that God sees. That while this thing has been uh, affecting us for so long, while it seems that these walls are impenetrable, while it seems that we can't conquer this, while it seems that we've been carrying this, while it seems all these different things, God's saying, stop seeming and start seeing what I see. See the victory that I have for you. See what I have available to you. See, exclamation point. Let us see this morning what God has in store for us. Amen? Amen. Now, an issue that could have occurred with these people was that they would have lacked the faith to see. That they would have lacked the faith to see the obstacle defeated and then in turn see themselves defeated. You see, too many times God will tell us to see the victory in something, but we see the defeat. So in other words, we're seeing the wrong things. God is telling us, see what he sees, and the only way we can do so is by not doubting. And that's a tough thing. That's a tough thing because I'm up here telling you, hey, don't doubt. But I'm not going to tell you that I'm up here saying I never doubt. So it's something we have to grab a hold of every day. We have to hang on to our faith. We have to hang on to that full armor of God. We have to take up daily what God makes available to us, like that manna that was falling from heaven. On a daily basis, it was made available. It was a provision. We need our faith daily to be able to see and not doubt. And fortunately for the children of Israel, they didn't doubt. They didn't doubt. Even though they weren't great soldiers, even though they didn't have any military training, even though they didn't hang out, you know, at the Airmen's Club, even though they didn't go to Paris Island, even though they didn't do any of those things, they still didn't doubt because they understood. They understood what God was calling them to do. You see, God wasn't calling them to be anything. God was calling them to see. God was calling them to see. Too many times we think God is calling us to be this, to be that, to do this, to do that. And God's saying, I just want you to see. See the victory. Because when you try to be, you try to be. God doesn't need you to be because he already is. He wants you to see. He wants you to see. Amen? And he's sharing with us that by us seeing it this way, the strongholds are pulled down. Even Paul mentions it in 2 Corinthians 10.4. He says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not carnal, but mighty in God. Not in us. In God for the pulling down of strongholds for pulling down strongholds in our lives. He's making resources available to us. These resources are available to us as long as we trust in him, as long as we trust in his strategy, as long as we trust in his plan and not our own. So he's calling us to see, folks. See that your Jericho is already defeated. See that your Jericho is already defeated. See that your Jericho is already defeated, that the strongholds have come down. Are we ready to overcome? Are we ready to see it? Are we ready to to go forward and do what God is telling us to do because we see the victory in advance of the victory? You know, Hebrews 11.1 says that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And people say a lot of times, well, we're not supposed to see it. We're not supposed to see it. What he's saying is the evidence of things not naturally seen. See it with the spiritual eyes. See it through God's perspective. That's what faith is. I don't need to see it. 
I didn't need to see that we would be here four years ago. I didn't need to see it with natural eyes, that is. Spiritually, God told me where we would be, and here we are. Many people won't, won't speak up the word of the Lord like that. I'm telling you that I'm telling you that I'm telling you. I've said the story a million times. He told me Hilton. He told me Hilton, and I thought it was Hilton Village. So I saw Hilton. I saw it. I saw it. New York, I'm sorry. I saw. I saw it. I saw it. But it wasn't the way I thought it would be. It wasn't Hilton Village. It was Hilton Boulevard. 604 Hilton Boulevard, four years ago. God is doing the amazing if we're ready to see. If we're ready to see. And that's what, you know, God was saying to Joshua. See it. Do you see it from my perspective? You know, this city that may seem intimidating, this city that may seem insurmountable, this city that may seem unconquerable, this city that may seem unachievable, do you see it because it's not any of these things to me, to God. It's not any of those things to God if we trust him, if Joshua and the people of Israel were willing to trust him. So I pray this morning that you would begin to see what God sees because that's how it starts. You know, I said, how do we overcome a seemingly hopeless situation? That's how, by seeing with God's perspective. Amen? Amen. So now in verse 3, you know, God starts to share his battle plan. Now, I don't know how you envision God. You know, I envision God like, you know, reverence, holy, this. But I also see God as having a sense of humor. God is funny. I have to tell you, he's funny. Because he begins to share this plan with Joshua, his plan. And mind you, this plan is unconventional. If you think about this plan, it's unconventional. It's actually crazy. It's out there. And can you picture Joshua? You know, Joshua... He's got some military background to him, you know, or, or warrior background, so to speak. He's a warrior, and he's thinking, hey, God's about to share his plan. All right, what great military tactic is he going to say? You know, are we going to flank him? Are we going to do fire teams? Are we going to do skirmishes? What are we going to do, Lord? Are we going to throw rocks for six months, and then, you know, hopefully we wear them down, then rush through the gate? What are we going to do? And God says, you ready? Yeah. I want you to walk. You want me to do, you want us to do what? Walk. I want you to walk once around for six days. Once around. You've heard me say it. You've read the scripture. Once around for six days. So I can kind of picture Joshua, you know, this is how God gives it to me. I picture Joshua like, <laughs> did I, you, you want us to walk. <laughs> That's what you want us to do? And God's like, yep. And then on the seventh day, I want you to walk seven more times. Seven more times. And I can picture Joshua like, the Lord has lost his spirit. <laughs> you know, him and Jesus must have, have had an outing. You know, they must be, a, what? You want us to do what? And then I want you to sound a trumpet and the walls will come down. The walls will come down. And then the thing about it that God says that the walls will come down flat. Flat. I, I've never pictured it that way. I picture walls coming down. And when you think of walls coming down, what do you think of? Rubble, you know, a whole bunch of crumbled stuff. It says flat. In other words, flat. <laughs> Can you picture flat? Think of a flat line. A heartbeat does this. Flat line, that means it's dead. That means it's like if it wasn't even there. In other words, you're not going to have to walk over something that he said he conquered for you. When he said he conquered it for you, it's done. It's over. It's flat. There's no remnant of it. There's nothing air there. There's nothing that should still be a part reminding you of what you've already conquered in him because the victory is yours. It's flat. Flat. So, you know, Joshua's like... <laughs> So this is your great plan. Okay. This is it. Uh, how many of us would have thought that that plan was ridiculous? Amen. Thank you for being honest, because I would have raised both hands for you. That it was ridiculous, maybe even an embarrassment, right? If you would have shared with your friends, you know, picture Joshua going back. All right, guys, huddle up. <laughs> this is what we're going to do. We're going to walk. <laughs> we're not going to fight. We're not going to pick up swords. We're not going to throw rocks, no cavalry, no airstrikes. We're just going to walk. 
would seem like an embarrassment. It seemed like an embarrassment. Folks, I got to tell you that sometimes our faith might seem like an embarrassment to those who lack faith. Listen to me. Sometimes our faith may seem unconventional or an embarrassment to those who lack faith, especially to those on the outside looking in. You know, they'll, they'll be like, uh, what are you doing? You go to church every week, sometimes twice or three times a week? What? You read this book, you know, a Bible, and you actually believe what it says? You know, it talks about parting of a Red Sea, guys. Come on. Can you picture the James River parting? You know, it parts and all of us can walk right through it. We don't need the JRB anymore. We just lift up Moses' staff every time there's traffic, and it would part, you know? We just walk right over with dry land. It would seem ridiculous to people. They look at us like it's a waste of time, and they look at our situations, our strongholds, our walls, the issues that we're dealing with, and they would say to us, why are you wasting your time? It's ridiculous. In fact, you're embarrassing me. It's an embarrassment to be your friend. Why are you tithing? Why are you praying? Why are you worshiping? Why are you reading the Word? Why are you spending so much time with this God based on the situation that I see you in? You should be crying. You should be worrying. You should be depressed. You should be afraid. I have to tell you that the people of this world do not understand our faith. Do not understand our faith. And God is calling on the people's faith to rise up. There are Christians that don't understand our faith, that it may seem ridiculous to them what we do and what we say and how we act. But God is not asking for anything else. He wants to know what is the quality of your faith. Like we said in the beginning, what is the quality of your faith? Because many people can have a lot of faith for little situations, but they can't have enough faith for the wall or for their stronghold to come down. And God is saying, I don't care about the quantity of your faith. I want to know about the quality of your faith. And Joshua, his quality rose up. Joshua did. The people did as they were told. You know why? Because the prize here was an avoiding embarrassment. The prize was obtaining the victory. So I don't care if you think I'm crazy being up here worshiping, if you think I'm crazy praising, if you think I'm crazy for tithing, or if you think I'm crazy for fasting, my faith is rising up because my faith is in a God that's going to provide me a victory, not a faith in avoiding embarrassment. So I may look crazy, but I'm saved. I'm saved. Amen? So Joshua did as he was instructed to. It was a step of faith. So God is telling us this morning, stop doubting and start shouting. Start shouting. Rejoice in the victory that you see is coming. It may not be here already, but you see it coming. God's not calling for our weapons. He's calling for our worship. He was calling for their worship, not their weapons. He didn't tell them to pick up a stick, to pick up rocks, to pick up a sword, to pick up anything. He told them, worship. He told them to shout. Shout the trumpet. Lay it out. Shout it. So he wants your worship. He wants you to have that ridiculous faith that you don't need anything else because life and death is in the power of the tongue. So we just need to speak those things that are not as though they were just as God did. God said, see the victory? I've already given it to you. He was speaking those things that are not as though they were. We need to do the same. Now, here's the important thing to note. God never told Joshua, or God told Joshua, see. He never told Joshua, understand. See the victory. See my plan that I have for you. But he never said, understand it. The same thing for us. We don't need to understand God's plan. His word says, you know, in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. He doesn't say, for I know the plans that I have that I want you to understand for me, declares the Lord. No. He asks us, all he does is he asks us to embrace it. Embrace the plan. Embrace it and follow him. He doesn't ask us to understand. I mean, in Isaiah 55, 8, we read, God's ways are not our ways. His plans are not our plans. So it's not going to look 
the way we thought it would look. You know, our overcoming these things are not going to turn out the way we thought, that we would hope it would happen day one or that we would hope it would happen day two. For them, it took seven days, seven days before the victory came. You know, I'm probably getting to the end before I, I should, but your seventh day might not be here, but that doesn't mean you should give up hope. That doesn't mean you should give up hope. You keep walking. You keep walking in the faith that God has placed within us, that God has placed within us. We need to follow it and embrace it because in Hebrews 11.30, it says, By faith, the walls of Jericho came down. By faith, the walls of Jericho came down. By faith. No point do you see up there by understanding the walls of Jericho came down. It's not about our understanding. Yes, we're supposed to learn, gain knowledge and understanding and wisdom to apply. But when we're talking about faith and when we're talking about what God tells us to do, it's not by our understanding. It's by faith that we follow. It seems like foolishness to the world. But those that know, those that have been there, many of you have testimonies, other things that we can pull off of each other and say, hey, she's overcome, she overcame, he's overcome. That's what helps us to endure because it's by faith, not by understanding. I don't know how God heals cancer, but he does. I don't know how God provides homes and finances, but he does. I don't need to understand it, but by faith I believe it. By faith I believe it. Amen? So embrace it. Even if it's unconventionally ridiculous, embrace what God would have for you, what he would tell you to do. And then in verse 6, as part of the plan... He says, pick up the Ark of the Covenant. Pick it up and have it, you know, walk around with it. Have it carried by the priest. Walk around with it. Now, remember that the Ark symbolizes the presence and power of God. So what he's saying to them and he's saying to us, we can't achieve anything without God. If we don't carry God with us, if we haven't accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior into our hearts, we're not going to be victorious in any way, shape, or form. We need to have him with us, amen? So we must carry him into every battle, into every circumstance, every situation, every stronghold, every sickness, every addiction, every bondage, every brokenness, every area. Carry the presence of God with you so that you too will overcome and achieve the victory, amen? Amen. Now, many won't do this. It's like... You, you share the word, you preach the word, you read it for yourself over and over again, but many won't do it because they won't carry God with them into the battle. So then they wonder, why don't I have a victory yet? Why haven't I been able to overcome? Why? Because you're trying to do it on your own. When we don't carry God with us, what, we say, what we're saying is, I could, I'm going to do this on my own because you're taking too long, Lord. You know, you've got me here doing this. I can't wait like this. Remember patience. We talked about patience. God is just not, you know, you want me to walk? That walking thing, that's not going to work. I'm a Marine. I know about military tactics. Walking is not tearing down walls. Taking a sledgehammer to it, having a howitzer blow a hole through it. Yeah, that's going to work. So we try to do it on our own. And God say, you don't have me with you then. Because you're trying to do it on our own. So I'm here to encourage you, not in a cliche type of way. We need to let go and let God. You know, you've heard that phrase. We need to let go and let God because we try to control so much and we have to let God do it and we'll have the victory. Then in the very last verse of chapter 6, it's verse 27, the Lord, it says that the Lord was with Joshua. The Lord was with him. The Lord was with him. When you know God's with you, nothing could stand in your way. When you know that you know God's with them, nothing can stand in your way. Now, the thing is that many Christians lack, they lack the confidence that God's really with them. They lack it. That's where the doubt comes in. That's why I say we need to shout and not doubt. We need to shout for the victory, but we also need to shout that God's with us. Because we'll doubt that he's with us. We don't have the confidence. In fact, I'll tell you that many preachers will hold back and they don't feel comfortable standing up in front of people saying, God's with me. God's with me. They're, they're embarrassed or seem like ah, apprehensive to say that God is with you. God is with all of you or that God is with us. God is with us. But I'm here to tell you today 
God is with us. Amen? God is with me. God is with you. God is with all of us. God is with us. He's with you. He's with your family. He's at your workplace. He's in your situation. He's there. If you would just see. Let us see. Let us see what he has. So as I get ready to close, this is what I said, you know, at the, that I was sharing from the end. He instructed them to walk. He instructed them to walk for seven days. Why seven? He could have done it day one. Why seven? And we know that the number seven is the number of completion. And people say, well, that's why, because it was a number of completion. Okay, but let me provide you a different revelation, something different than that. I believe he's trying to teach us something. He's trying to teach in us to walk, Amen. to instill in us a walk of faith, because we're supposed to walk by faith, not by sight. So how do we do so if we don't begin to walk? To begin to walk when we don't see anything. To begin to walk when it seems ridiculous. To begin to walk when others are talking about us and, and saying that we're an embarrassment to the family or that we're embarrassment at the workplace because we take time out to pray for our food, because we take time out to pray for a co-worker, or because we won't uh, hold back and you know we won't keep fighting or we, we continue to fight for prayer back into the schools because we keep doing this. They're like, you're just embarrassing yourself. No, he's trying to instill in us a disciplined walk to be able to continue to walk by faith, building in us that spiritual discipline and that stamina because some of us are willing to walk. You know, uh, Ennis, God bless that man's soul. Lord have mercy. He took me on a walk three miles. This brother here was speed walking. I'm like, whoa, whoa, dude. I thought we were just going to go for a walk and talk. Oh, there was no talk. I was like, okay. And all right, so let me share. God bless you. Some walk, but others won't. They'll continue to walk. And then it's like after mile one, I was ready to quit on him. And that's what we do to God. Because sometimes God will speed up our walk. He'll slow down our walk. And then when he speeds it up, we're like, ah, enough. Or if he slows us down, we're like, you're not, you're not going fast enough for me. I need to pick it up. And we're doing it without him. So he's teaching us a, a discipline walk, a stamina to be able to walk with him, not without him, with him, till the walls come down, until the walls come down. Many people will walk before, you know, many people will walk because walls have already come down. I did that a lot in my life. I walked with God because of the victories. But then when there were no victories to celebrate, I stopped walking. Amen. Because I started counting my own victories. Oh, yeah, I did it. I did it. So we need to be able to walk before the victory. Continue to walk before the victory, before the victory regardless. Because too many will walk after the victory but not many will walk before the victory. So he's trying to teach us something this morning, to walk before the victory. So I pray that we realize that we need to start building that spiritual walk, that discipline of walk around any Jericho in your life. Any Jericho in your life, begin to walk. Amen? Amen? And I know that many of us are at a point where we say, God, I believe. You know, help my own belief. You know, we're there. God, I believe but I haven't established that real discipline in my life to walk. I haven't established that discipline so I'm too inconsistent. I'm too intermittent. I'm not getting enough traction, Lord. You know, my prayer life is hit or miss. My reading is hit or miss. My time with you, basically, is hit or miss. That's okay, because I'm here to share with you. Chuck, if you'll come up and play, I'm here to share with you that now is the time for all of that to change. Now is the time for all of that to change where... We begin to see what God sees. We begin to understand what God would have us understand. Not on our own understanding, but through him. So if you all please stand to your feet. Today we're believing for Jericho walls to come down, amen? amen. Who's ready to believe with me that Jericho walls in your life are going to come down? Amen. amen? Jericho walls are coming down. Change is on its way. 
Victory is already here if we just w be willing to embrace the victory. We already have the victory, but now will we walk victorious? It's one thing to have the victory. It's one thing to know, hey, I'm a state champion, or I'm this, or I'm that. But are you walking around like one? Because I constantly say, we're sons and daughters of the Most High. So why do we walk as if we're slaves to the Egyptians? Why do we walk as if we're in bondage? Why do we walk as if the stronghold is stronger than God? As if the stronghold has a stronger hold on us than God has a hold of us. I would ask you this morning, if you're struggling with a stronghold, if you're struggling with an obstacle, let us pray for you. Come forward now as I'm talking. If it's healing you need, let us pray for you. If it's financial issues, if it's relationship issues, if it's brokenness, if it's trauma, if it's whatever, come forward now. Come forward now. We'll have people that will be up here praying for you. We'll have people that will stand with you. We'll have people that will come in agreement with you. This is our walk. This is our walk of faith. This is our faith. This is our, you want the walls to come down, then you need to walk forward. This is you walking around Jericho right now. But we're getting ready to shout. We're getting ready to shout and not doubt anymore. Amen? We're getting ready to stand how God told us to stand. We don't need weapons. We don't need anything. We just need God. We need to be able to see. Those of you that are there, I encourage you. You know, think about somebody else. If you don't have a wall, think about somebody else's walls and stand in the gap of them. Pray where you're at. Believe in what, in what the Word was saying today. Change is on the way, folks. Change is on the way. If you need prayer, if you're up here, if we can have Hannah, Josh, if you can come on up and pray for, for some of the people that are up here. Let us embrace what God has for us today, amen? Let us not reject it. And now... I thank God for these people that have come up. For those of you online, if you want prayer, you know, just let us know. But I thank God because they're not allowing embarrassment hinder the path that God has for them. They're not saying, well, people are going to watch me online. Oh, no. Oh, people from the pews are going to think I don't have it all together. Oh, no. No. They're stepping out in faith. So, Father, I just thank you for these people that are here, oh, Lord. I thank you for their faithfulness. They're showing it, O oh Lord. They're asking of you, Father God. They're putting their trust in you, their faith in you, their hope in you, Father. And they're believing that Jericho walls are coming down in their lives, O oh Lord. Father, those strongholds that, that have kept them for the vic from the victory that they have in you, or seemingly have kept them, Father, but you're showing them right now to see. You're opening up their eyes of understanding. You're opening up their eyes of faith to see the victory before the victory, O oh Lord. To see the walls come down flat, that there's no remnant, that there's no issue. There's nothing else, Father God, that they would have to deal with, O oh Lord. I thank you, Father God, for what you're doing in their lives, Lord. I thank you that the victory is there, that change is coming about, O oh Lord. Thank you for your spirit flowing and moving. Father, I pray for all those that are here in attendance, those at the pews, Father God, that you would touch their lives as well, that maybe they're not dealing with any obstacles right now, but Father, that they know and they trust that when one does come up, that they will see the victory, that they will see healing, that they will see themselves as overcomers, that they will see that it's achievable, O oh Lord. Father, I pray for those watching online, the faithful ones, Father God, whether they're watching now or to come, Father, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for breakthrough. Thank you for conquering those things that seem insurmountable. Thank you for the victory when it seemed improbable. Thank you, Lord, because we're here to shout and not doubt, Father God. So we honor you this day, O oh Lord, with our praise. We honor you, Father God, with our prayers. We honor you with all that's within us, Father God. And we say, we shall trust you. We will embrace you, and we will continue to see as you have called us to see. Father, we do these things. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. Folks, life is about overcoming obstacle 
after obstacle after obstacle. And God doesn't want you to live in fear anymore. He doesn't want you to live in fear, apprehension, or defeat. He wants you to see. He wants you to see. See with spiritual eyes, not natural eyes. See that we can overcome because we have power in Him and we have the victory. Amen? So God bless you all. I thank God for all of you. I'm so thankful for the time that we get together. God bless you. And I look forward to seeing you all here next time at the crossroads. Amen.